too many people think that the most important thing to do on day one is to make a shelter because when night falls the enemies all crowd around you at night and whereas that is true uh, but another option is to be out on the water in a boat because you're moving pretty quick and so long as you don't get hit by a trident you're pretty much good to just sail across the water until daytime and you are relatively safe or you could find a cave underwater to try and swim into or something like that there's stuff to do and you don't have to worry too much about uh, nighttime monsters while you're out on the ocean and so I guess the the next thing to do now, moving on to step three, is to find a place that you want to live at, because you'll notice that our inventory is extremely full right now. I just learned you can sprint in a boat. I wonder if that actually makes me faster. That's weird. Um, and now the sun is coming up, and it we have made it back to the village. I think this was the second village that I found around these coordinates, so I gotta make a decision which one I wanna live in. I always liked the spruce forest one. So I'm gonna... Oh, I don't know, that's a tough choice. It's up to you if you want to build your own house or if you just wanna steal one of their houses. I think I'm probably going to start out just by taking one of their houses and adjusting it. They don't mind a roommate. Until the roommate kicks them out feeds them to the zombies. I think out of all the new houses that they introduced into this update of Minecraft, the Spruce Village probably has my favorite type of houses, or maybe the the Snow Biome Village. That guy really uh, doesn't want to leave his house if he planted a berry bush at his front door. It's going to hurt every time he steps out here. Hurt me. Uh, I'm going to take all of his money. Ha -ha. So, uh, in this village, even though they are some of my favorite houses, it looks like the terrain is really messed up and hard to navigate. So I'm actually going to just kind of take what I want from them and skedaddle on over to that other village. And let's check this one out. This one looks easier and has lots of opportunities to build things around it. Out here in the pier. And there's some creepy babies making out in the water for some reason. All right. <laughs> and then here's a dad telling his son that he has to wait until <laughs> wait until after he's married for that kind of stuff. <laughs> so let's see which which house I like the best here and take all the stuff that I feel like I need along the way. I typically try and leave the hay bales in the village that I'm living in alone because it adds a lot of just like happiness to the village. It's one thing in hardcore to just solely focus on like thriving and surviving and whatnot, but I think it's important to keep the area around where you stay at looking real nice so that there's some happiness factor to it. The very first time I tried a hardcore world, I spent several days making a really cool house that I liked a lot, and then wound up dying on the front porch of it because there was like stairs leading up to it, and I got blown up by a creeper on the front porch, which wasn't the thing that killed me. It was like me falling off of the stairs onto the ground, and the fall damage got me, and it just really hit me all at once, like how drastic it is on a hardcore world when you spend so much time on it and then you die and just lose everything and it's like wait it's not like I just lost my stuff but like the world's gone <laughs> and so I try to not focus so much on building the coolest most epic things until I'm a lot further along in the world but I still try and keep it looking nice while I go it looks like with this village the the high points are the pier. I think that's what I was liking the most about this. And so I think I will take one of those ones out on the pier. And so after checking out some real estate options, I have decided that I really like these little marketplace towns here. And I'm going to be taking the leather worker's house because I can see pretty much everything from here. And also enjoy this out here out front.
Sometimes I go into a village and there is a lot of one profession. There's like just a ton of farmers and nothing else, or a ton of fishermen and nothing else. This is the first time I've seen just a ton of leather workers. All three of these guys are leather workers, obviously because of the three cauldrons, but for a pointless <laughs> thing for your village to be trading. I mean, I guess I have some leather, but I'm not I'm not trading it for that. That's I ain't doing that. But I'm going to be taking over this house and oh, look, there's a fourth one. You guys are going to get some new jobs. Sorry. Sorry to just come into your town and demand that of you, but that's that's what's happening. You're also losing your house. I'm sorry. Uh, I am definitely going to expand the wall out, I think. That might mess up the roof on the back, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. I could probably just chop that down, expand it, and that's weird. Right, now that I've moved his stuff out, I can start putting my stuff in, and let's just... Ooh. And then let's decide what we want to keep. I want to keep this. I want to leave that in there. Leave that. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take that. Uh, I'm going to try and use some of this to get a farm going. I'm going to get all the food out, and we are going to finally cook it. Uh, fishing rod just in case I think that's everything that we need out of there again I apologize for the uh, the weird textures if you are familiar with runescape you won't have a problem identifying what they are except for this one because I drew this one myself which is just a soul for rotten flesh um, oh someone's getting hurt out here what you getting hurt on did you just fall down I think he, I think he fell down um but yeah, if you're familiar with RuneScape, you'll know what they are, but if not, um, I'll mention them if they're important. You'll notice that uh, each one of them is wearing like a weird little cape. Uh, if you haven't played RuneScape, when you level up a skill to the max, you get a cape for it. And these guys are wearing capes tiered to uh, what they make. Like, he has the ranged cape on, and ranged users in that game mostly use like leather type of armor. And so since he's a leather worker, he had the range cape. That was probably one of the more obscure ones I was unsure about. Uh, but yeah, we are here, good to go. I do have my six diamonds, but I just remembered that we have another opportunity to get even more. And there is really not much room in here. I'm actually going to do the, uh, the like floor trick with this, since there's so little room. There we go. And going to make the diamond pickaxe. Woo! Put that there. And you know what? I'm actually going to also make a sword. Hey, look, it's a dragon scimitar. Ha ha! Got one more left. Uh, I'm going to hold on to it because sometimes I need them out in the field if I have to craft something real quick. Um, but let's do one more thing. I'm going to do one more controversial thing for a hardcore mode, so you do not have to do this. There is an alternative to it, but just for ease of access. You'll notice the coordinates that I have on the screen. Um, sometimes in worlds like this, you would often want to keep a notebook on your desk or something and write down coordinates of things that you want to remember where they're at. And so if you ever get lost, you can open up your little coordinate menu and be able to find your way home really nicely. However, um, there is something else that you can do. It is cheating, um, but not by much. I'm going to pause and hit open to LAN, allow cheats on, and hit start LAN world. And I'm just going to do one command. And I will let you decide if you want to do this or not. Otherwise, you can keep a notebook and try and keep track of it, write down a bunch of notes and whatnot. But I'm just going to do set world spawn and hit enter there. And then just to make sure that I'm not still cheating and that pausing the game will actually pause the game because when you are open to LAN, the game will uh, act sort of like a server and it will not actually pause the game when you hit the escape button. And so I'm going to exit back out to the menu, go back into single player and open the world back up. And we're back. What this will do 
is so that instead of me having to have a notebook on my desk and get them all mixed up because I do that for several different worlds and lose the notes and have a hard time finding my way back home and the coordinates menu being all complicated and whatnot, I just want to make it a little bit easier to find my way back home. And this does come at the cost of an inventory slot, which in hardcore mode, your inventory is very important. So having a compass with me, which you can make with four iron ingots and a piece of redstone, you can make a compass. Uh, hitting set world spawn will actually make it so that the compass is always pointing home. I used to think for the longest time that uh, the compass would always point north, but that is not the case. It actually points to the world spawn, so... Uh, to make it easier to go home, I just keep a compass on me at all times, and oh yeah, and uh, as you can see, as I walk around that point, the compass will stay at home. You don't necessarily have to have a compass on you at all times for this. Um, if you open up your uh, menu here and look at your like what is this called recipe book, there is one compass up here, which if I move a little bit over here, you'll notice that that one also works like the compass in my inventory, which I always thought was kind of kind of strange, kind of helpful. It reminds me of a long time ago when people used to like look at a cobblestone block knowing that the texture on it would always face a certain way, like you would find this little L thing and look that way and it would point north or something. And, but now if you ever need to, you can just open that up, look at the compass, but uh, because it's already cheating as it is, I'm going to just keep one of my inventory here. Uh, but yeah, you don't have to do that. That's just something that I prefer to do just as ease of access. It doesn't really help a whole lot with surviving in a hardcore world, which is why I think it's kind of okay to do. Kind of the same thing with my data packs. It depends on if it's something I feel like changes the gameplay experience too much. So you don't have to do that. It's just if you want to. And so now that I have gone ahead and cleared out my inventory some, I think the next step is to make a furnace and get some food going while I work on some other things. I cannot believe this guy has such a small house. Uh, let's see. It looks like pork chop is what we got the most of so far. I'll take those with me. And so what we're going to do is the other option that I mentioned for getting diamonds. Uh, obviously the first steps was to jump out into an ocean, find the shipwreck, and then find one of the little underwater caverns with uh, the magma on them. But the next, or probably something you can do even before that, you find the shipwreck and sometimes you will find within them these buried treasure maps. These buried treasure maps uh, very often have some diamonds in them. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. It looks like my dot is at the northeastern part of the map and maps in your hand will always face north, so if I position myself facing north, which you can see uh, right where my mouse is right here, if I turn this off you can see in the little uh, coordinate thing on my screen that I am facing north, now I'm facing west, now I'm facing east. Another way you can do that, since the compass is not reliable, you can open up this menu, and it is in here somewhere. Um, Yeah, this is exactly why I have that data pack that shows me the coordinates on my screen, because... Oh, thank you. So if you look at... See, if I move my map, the top of it is touching like my coordinates on the left side there. The fourth one down says facing north. So that's how you find it there if you don't have the data pack. And... Thank you. <laughs> And so while facing north aligned with this map, um, I know that I have to go west and south. So I'm going to turn this to the west. I'm just going to continue in that first direction for a little bit since on the map I am a very small dot. When you get a little closer, um, it gets larger. And if I see myself inching along, maybe I should be going southwest. My cat just jumped on me. Maybe I should go west since it looks like there's a land mass north if I, if I don't want to have to across the land I'd rather just boat in the ocean because it's easier than climbing mountains and traversing valleys and stuff. Essentially I'm just heading southwest, that's what I'm doing. Oh look, I'm already almost there. Many of you got trident, good. We good? Okay. I always check what's in their hands if they have something. 
because they are very dangerous. How close are we now? Oh, I missed it. Let's go this way. These maps do kind of cater towards where you picked them up from. And I don't remember where the boat was that I got it from. Uh, I ain't going around that. I am just going to break the boat. And so if I were more observant and actually noticed when I picked it up and got right on top of it, I probably wouldn't be as far away from it as I am. You usually don't have to go very far at all for that sort of thing. Ooh, I just saw a tried. Run away. It is not worth it. Just run as fast as you can. Pretty much abandon everything you were doing and run. Hey look, a zombie villager. Those can be important, but I am not ready to handle one right now, so we will try and find him later. There is also a sunken ship here. Let's Let's try it out. What we got, what we got? Uh sure, I'll take thorns and paper and bamboo. That's a good find. Now I don't have to find a jungle. I think that's the only thing I'm going to find there. That's scary. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Am I in danger? These don't always spawn with monsters, but when they do, gotta keep a close ear out. Oh, is he gonna drown? Why are you drowning yourself, man? No! Hey, get back up here. Can you climb? Good boy. Uh, let's see if he holds something in his hand. He won't despawn if, if that's the case. I don't have a name tag for him, but if a mob is holding something, they don't despawn. Which is why when you run into a guy with a trident, he often uh, stays, even when you leave and come back. Uh, he didn't pick that up, so he, he's dead to me and to everybody else because he's a zombie. I like them though, so I, I try not to kill them if I don't have to, but I'm not coming back for him. One more chance, man. Yeah, nah. He ain't doing it. I ain't messing with that either. Typically, I wouldn't recommend doing this sort of thing at nighttime because early on in the world, you really don't need to bother with monsters. Um doing anything at night time is just you shouldn't have to bother with that I would recommend to probably carry a bed with you at pretty much almost all times and sleep a lot of people think that their bed has to be at home as their spawn point but remember this is hardcore you don't respawn so there's no point in worrying about where your bed is at and it is pretty much just a tool for making it daytime and where am I at now Oh, getting closer. Map is filling out. So I don't need to be going east, I need to be going west. I'm just very distracted with underwater stuff. Like that. Oh, I think that's that's actually the, the ship I I got this map out of. Alright. So, literally, if I would have just jumped on it when I got it from that ship, it would have just been a few blocks away. Uh -huh. It's going to be deep underwater. Oof. Alright, well, let's get about as close as we can. Right about here. And I'm going to hop out of the boat. And I forgot to make a a shovel, and I am not going to be doing this without a shovel. 
and I found an axe in that chest, so you get to see another data pack that I have going. Um, this is another one of those things you can decide if you think it's cheating too much or not, but uh, it takes a long time to chop down trees in Minecraft, and how awesome would it be if you could just go up to it and just go like that, and have the whole tree fall out. It doesn't really make too much of a difference when it comes to cheating on the game or not. Um, like, it doesn't really help me stay alive. It just kind of helps me save time, which in some cases that could be considered kind of cheaty, but once you try it, there's no going back. Hey, he has a notulish cell. I never wind up using those, but I like to grab them when I can. Oh, he dropped his head. Speaking of data packs, that's another one, but let's get away from this witch because I don't need to mess with that either. Uh, sometimes, just to add a little bit of extra fun into a world, I have something going that makes it so that mobs will, on different variables of rarity, uh, will drop their head. And so it's kind of fun to just collect them and make a room where you just collect as many as you can. Or wear them if you want, but yeah, meh. So anyway, we were here for the buried treasure. And I chopped down that tree to make a crafting table. And this witch really wants to die. Good thing I have a diamond sword. Sometimes, as good as armor is, having a, a good weapon is just as important. Come on, stop lagging. All right, shovel time. Here we go. As far as I understand, I think buried treasure is never under a extremely solid block, like nothing you need a pickaxe to mine. And it should always be under either like gravel, dirt, or sand. So a shovel is always good for this. You can do it without a shovel. Not recommended, especially if it's as deep as this one. Uh, you definitely want a shovel. And what I learned, if any of you have ever tried to find these things before, you might think they're extremely hard, but there is a tip that I got for most of this hardcore series, actually, is watching a guy on YouTube and Twitch named Phil. Uh, he is definitely very good at hardcore Minecraft, and he taught me that if you go from the bottom of the X and kind of put your cursor to where just a little bit is sticking out like that, that's about where you want to go. So, directly below me. Should be under that block. That was done. I should be very close, though. Doesn't work always 100% of the time, but I should be extremely close. And I'm actually just going to do this. I was about to swim up and say, like, remember to watch your bubbles, but... Also, is it that one? Yeah, right there. See? I, was, I wasn't too far off. So if I actually stand on top of it, and then look down at it... Okay, so I just needed to take a few steps forward. But you can see how it looks there. Um, it's also important to note that if you have a map in your offhand, um, the positioning on that is going to be slightly different. So if I stand here it shows me like all the way inside of it. So I try to always look at it in my hand like that. And so with that out of the way, we are all done with this map. Don't ever need it again. And let's take a look at what we got. This can often have diamonds in it, and so that is why it is good to go for these pretty early on. Uh, looks like I was not lucky enough to get any diamonds though, but I did get a good amount of iron and some emeralds. Actually, I have eight emeralds right now, that's really good. Some cooked food, which is nice. And sometimes I take the uh, the chest with me, but eh. I always wind up getting another map later on and then thinking, like, oh, let me go get it. And then if the chest is there, I'll be able to be like, oh, I got this one already. And so we got that all done and out of the way. Time to move on to probably the next step. So let's head back home.
hey thanks for tuning in i'm going to cut it off there until the next episode which will be up real soon